This week on the Game Marks Podcast, we play the unreleased UWC prototype from 1989. Will this game hold up today? Should it have been released? Will we play it forever? Woo! Or future endeavor? You're fired! So many questions. Plug in and put on those nostalgia goggles because this week's Game Marks Podcast starts now. And now, the game! Welcome to the Game Marks Podcast. I am the man of a thousand and one nicknames, your reigning, defending, Clash at the Feast champion, George Feast. And I am the man they call Johnny Clash, and today we are playing the UWC prototype for the NES. As always, guys, we'd love to hear from you. So please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Make sure to subscribe and rate this podcast wherever you choose to listen. And join in on the conversation on all forms of social media at Game Marks Pod. Johnny, would you like to know what my nickname is this week? Yeah, you know, I'm always down to make fun of you, so. Uh, yeah, well, this is, uh, this is a good one. So uh, this week, I am being known as... As the ESC. And ESC stands for Emergency Support Chicken. But uh, throw in the other word for chicken in there. Okay. okay. Yeah, so uh, my one of the guys that I streamed with on Wednesday, uh, Micropony, got a giant rubber chicken for his Twitch streams. And he calls it his... Emotional support cock. <laughs> so, Our viewers are, thought that was really funny and decided that that was going to be my nickname this week. Are you my ESC? <laughs> I don't want to be, but <laughs> I think for the next week, I'm everyone's ESC. Oh, boy. Okay. I can't wait for next yeah. week so we could change this nickname. Last week, we played WWF Rage in the Cage. Actually, last week was quite the week because not only did we play that, we also played WWF Royal Rumble on stream with our friends at Off the Hop Rope, Smart Mark Sterling, and Nick Stapp. That was fun. And I was greener than goose shit on that stream, apparently. Yeah, what did you get, slimed on uh, Nickelodeon or something? Yeah, I don't know. Apparently, apparently it was the uh, Kids' Choice Awards also, and I got slimed. The funny thing is, Nick was like, George... Your 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 video is green, and you're like, shut up, Nick. It's fine. It's not green. And I, was then, like, <laughs> I was like, I thought he was making a joke, like, oh, you're green, and I was like, I've played this game before. I'm good. <laughs> I'm a wily vet. But rage in the cage. How are you feeling? Good. I I mean, I I still I'm sticking with it. I still think if we can combine the rosters of all of the other games into Rage in the Cage and have that be one perfect game, then it you, you're not matching that. But yeah, sticking with it. Still love it. How about you? Agreed. Everything you just said. The roster was huge. I wish we had some of the updates of the other games, some, you know, the ring bell outside and the the slot bucket and all that, but otherwise, I enjoyed it. Oh yeah. Now, speaking of the Twitch stream. The Twitch streams really coincide with our Discord server. So if you're not a part of either one of those and you don't join myself every Wednesday or Johnny Clash when he randomly announces that he's going to be going live and playing Spider Man, UFC, Fire Pro, I mean. I'm a wild card. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash Game Marks Pod. And, uh, you gotta, you gotta follow us, be a part of the video experience, and also on that page you will see a link for our Discord server where we talk about absolutely everything. There is a topic and a conversation for everyone. That's right. We have a lot of fun lately. Uh, it seems like everyone's been watching, rewatching like the Star Wars series, so that's been fun seeing some people watch it for the first time and give their feedback. We talk about everything, so join us today, George. We have a big announcement next week. Last week, we announced we will be doing something with No Mercy, some sort of weekly television product on YouTube. Next week, we are going to reveal the name, the full details, when the draft will be, when the show will be, everything. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I cannot wait. This is something that you and I have talked about for a while. Uh, we needed something to replace the pre-pre-pre-pre-show on Twitch, 
And uh, we're going to start this new Fed. Uh, so, yes, yeah, stay tuned to uh, all of our social medias. And uh, we'll be posting up a little trailer reveal later this week. I can't wait. And just a reminder for everyone, once we hit 10 t-shirts sold on ProWrestlingTees.com slash GameMarksPod, we are going to release a retrospect of Bret Hart in wrestling video games, much like we did The Undertaker. We saw a couple sales pop in already, so cannot wait. We're so close. Only a few more shirts left. And also, do not forget about the streamer Spotlight. For the month of January, we are promoting the Elder Spork. So if you are not already, go be sure to go and check out his Twitch page, twitch.tv slash the Elder Spork. He said for 2021, his plans are to be uh, live more often, but he already has an impressive video archive of all of his speed runs through multiple different mario games it's insane to watch some of these speedrunner guys go through and if you haven't ever experienced it highly highly recommend it it is insane what they are capable of doing but johnny i do think it is time we have had uh quite the uh the gaming news week so why don't you go and take us through some of that gaming news What's up, Game Marks Podcast? This is Danny Tancredi, and I'm here with my brother, Johnny Tancredi, and together we are the Cult Looking Podcast. Each week, we bring to you the latest news and reviews on all things baseball collectibles. From baseball cards and memorabilia to bobbleheads and stadium giveaways, each episode will discuss the newest products to hit the shelves of your local card store and your favorite ballparks around the country. Be sure to be following us on Instagram at the Cult Looking Podcast and on Twitter at Cult Looking BB. New episodes drop every Friday, so be sure to tune in wherever great podcasts like this one are available. The Caught Looking Podcast. Don't get caught looking, start collecting. Cyberpunk 2077's next update will be out very soon. According to CD Projekt Red, the game's patch will be released within the next nine days, which means it could drop later this week or sometime next week. What's also not divulged is whether or not it will release on console first. Several updates have released on console before coming to PC and Google Stadia, but some have also released on PC and console at the same time. Unfortunately, not only does CD Projekt Red not give this information, but it doesn't say what the update will do. What it does reveal is that the following update will be much more substantial, though again, doesn't shed any light on how significant it will be to fix this game. Among Us creators Inner Sloth showed off another part of the upcoming airship map by previewing one of the features players will encounter there. A brief video shared on social media showed a moving platform that looks like a convenient way to traverse the map, but could also be problematic for players depending on what kind of situation they're in. The airship map the platform is housed in has not yet been released and does not have a release date at this time. The tweet states, You've heard of being betrayed by your friends. When the airship map drops, get ready for being betrayed by one moving platform. Furthering the theory... That George is sus. WWE Undefeated continues to add new superstars to its roster, and it doesn't get much bigger than its latest addition, the game himself, Triple H. Triple H is now live in Enway's hit mobile game, and the Cerebral Assassin looks just as deadly as you'd expect in the new Superstar Spotlight trailer. When it's time for the finish, you could pull off the iconic finishing move, the pedigree in style, which is now accompanied by slick green effects as the opponent is slammed into the ground. And you even get the DX chop as the icing on the cake. And that's all the gaming news we have this week. Check back next week. That was a oh, mouthful. Oh, man. That was a lot to say. So, so Johnny, I don't even really know where to start here. Do you Do you want to talk about... The Among Us? Do you want to talk? Do you want to get some more, some more venting out of uh, Cyberpunk? Like, so all I'll say is for Cyberpunk is they released their update roadmap, and it appears that they've had three hot fixes so far. Two more patches are coming out, and within the next year, they're going to start doing the free DLC and the free next gen console update. They're not telling anyone when this game is going to be like fully fixed. 
that's a problem. I'm tired of ranting about it. I don't have the game anymore, so I don't care as much anymore. But it's just still a little ridiculous. I know Among Us is more your thing now. I kind of gave up on the game mostly because of the banned internet in my house. I can't really play it. Um, <laughs> I did try WWE Undefeated. It just had a really lengthy like intro mode to take you through the game. You know where it's like, press here, do this, now do this, now do this. I'm like, okay, I'm kind of sick of it. And then I downloaded Wrestling Empire. So, <laughs> <laughs> so have you have you given uh, the Undefeated a shot at all? Uh, I actually have it installed. I have yet to open it. It is on my list to play. Uh, the game itself looks kind of interesting. It's uh, a good concept. I've definitely, I've definitely seen the commercial um, on on social media for uh, Triple H being added into the the game. So I am aware of it. It's on the Duck radar. Game. Installed. Installed. Just got to play it. All right. Cool. What uh, What else you've been playing these days? Anything new? Anything flashy? Uh, so I, uh, I started playing a game called Escape from Tarkov. Oh, okay. Which is, I mean, obviously I've, you know, every Wednesday for the last two or three weeks, I've been, I've been playing Warzone since I've been able to get some, some, uh, upgrades into my computer. So very excited that now I can play Warzone, uh, and, and actually provide some use, but I've been playing a game called Escape from Tarkov, which is essentially, uh, it's a loot grinder shooter. So you pretty much a bunch of people are dropped into the map. You have to get to extraction points. And along the way, obviously, you come across other players. It is, I don't know if necessarily it qualifies as a battle royal because it's not like there's a clear cut winner. Everyone's dropped in, and the goal is to just get to an extraction point. Okay. But it is so in depth. And just needlessly complicated at points that it actually sucks you in. It is, without a doubt, one of the most realistic shooters I've ever played. That sounds fun. I would be into something like that. It seems like a lot of people I know are at least watching. I don't know about playing, but they're watching people play Rust. I know Tim the Tatman's been playing Rust. I don't believe yep. that's something I could play at this time because it's a Steam game. And I'm a Mac user and we get nothing. <laughs> but Miles Morales has been a lot of fun. I know you're not watching my streams because you don't want to ruin the game. And no. I, underst- I understand that, you know. But if if you want to, you know, jump in the chat, just block the rest of it. I would say there, there's <laughs> been a couple of points where I've, I've dropped in and I've just muted the stream and done the pop out chat. And I'm there just you go. Like, I wonder what everyone's talking about. Um, it, it's night. Like, it's almost the same gameplay as the first Spider-Man, which is awesome because it was, like, fail-proof. But then they just added stuff that made it a little better. And That's they also exactly took, what like, I was hoping. Like, New York City in the game is still the same, but you don't have to go through, like, exploring the city because it's the same. But they added, like, snow, so it at least looks a little different. Okay, And okay. the game came out around Christmas, so, you know, s- yeah. snow. And I forgot to mention, also, another game that I've been playing a lot, uh, I've recently picked up... The Last of Us Two again. Oh, okay. I still have to start so that. I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm back going one into at the time. grind of that, but it is like I said last time. I don't want to play it too fast because it is such a pretty and immersive experience. And man, oh man, does every aspect of the of the game just pull on your heartstrings? Every single part of it is just unbelievable. Yeah. After Miles Morales, I'll get into that. But okay, it's so good. All right, enough about the games we've been playing. Why don't we head on over to our favorite section, Georgie's favorite section every time, the question of the week. All right. Ooh, yeah. Game Marks, uh uh-huh. We are here to tell you that the Game Marks podcast is on Pro Wrestling Tees and Tee Public, uh uh-huh. But the cream will always rise to the top. Now, there are two ways to shop. ProWrestlingTees.com slash GameMarksPod or TeePublic.com slash user slash GameMarksPod because you know the Game Marks podcast is the cream of the crap, huh? So head on over today and bow down to the kingdom of the madness. Your mustache is crooked, Marks. Oh, God, love ProWrestlingTees.com. Johnny, 
out of all the shirts that we have on our pro wrestling tees, what is your favorite one? I still like wearing the NES looking pro wrestling one with GMP I, on it. I actually wore that shirt yesterday. Same, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, guys. Yeah. ProWrestlingTees.com slash GameMarksPod. It is the official store of the Game Marks Podcast. Make sure to always go and check out the shirts there. And when you buy the shirts, Johnny, what kind of shirts should they be getting? You have to get the soft shirts. You got to you gotta upgrade. It's like $3 extra. You got to get the soft shirts. But it's They'll so last longer. They, they feel shrink. good. It feels nicer. Yeah. Uh, 100%. All right. So the question of the week. Weekly segment, we go back and forth, ask each other a question, and then we'd like to propose the question to you. And you let us know your answers on all forms of social media, at Game Marks Pod. Last week, Johnny Clash's banger of a question was, what is your favorite handheld console? Uh, I said the Game Boy Advanced. Johnny Clash also said the Game Boy Advanced. And we've got some great answers. So Caught Looking Podcast says... The Game Boy Color and the PSP. Can't argue that. B. David 19 says the PSP, he played SOCOM and the SmackDown vs. Raw series on it for a little while. Same, same. SOCOM was great. And then Bennett Wood 09 says the Sega Nomad. Was he the only one to say the Sega Nomad? <laughs> I'm, I'm actually looking up what the Sega Nomad is right now. Oh my god, this thing is awesome. It's a fully portable Genesis. Yeah, it's great. Whoa, that thing's awesome. Now, I believe, I don't know if my cousin had this or the Game Gear, but I remember him popping Sonic 2 in, and he just wouldn't let me play ever. <laughs> oh, then it's got to be this, because this is like, you can put the full-on cartridge from your Genesis in this thing. How have I gone my entire life without knowing this thing existed? This is the coolest thing ever. Yeah, this has to be it. Yeah, wow. I wonder if he still has it. I got to I got to ask him. Wow. All right. Getting itchy. Getting going itchy. On, going going on the eBay later. All right, Johnny. So, a lot of the times when we talk about video games, whether they're old or new, whether they're remasters or you're talking about just playing the classics, we always talk about immersion. And, and what helps you get immersed into the game. So what better to immerse you in than the world that the video games are set in? So my question to you and to everyone else this week is, if you could pick a video game world to live in, which game are you picking? Ooh. I mean, a lot of the worlds in video games are uh, full of, like, evil and you know stuff you don't want to be around. This reminds me of the R- Robot Chicken skit years ago where... Mario goes into Liberty City. Do you ever see that one? Yes, yes. And then at the end, he's like, oh, Raccoon City, that sounds lovely. And they go that <laughs> way. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I have a very easy answer. Let's hear it. I want to hear oh, yours it first. Is, uh, the world of Animal Crossing. Okay, just some easy living. You just catch some e- fish. Everything and- is wonderful. You just have to make your own island, and your biggest problem is paying your mortgage, which is the real life. <laughs> I still don't know what the point of that game is, but... Uh, it's literally like a life simulator, but with <laughs> cute animals, and it's it's almost like a, a living zen garden is how I would describe it. Hmm. Maybe I'm going to say WWF Betrayal to save Stephanie McMahon. Okay, okay. <laughs> are, you, are you a poorly rendered uh, pixel graphic of yourself? Yes. Maybe, maybe I'll have to make that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I have, This is a hard one. Maybe like Spiral the Dragon or something. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. But, as usual, we now turn it to you guys. The Game Marks yourselves. What video game world would you most like to live in? But now, Johnny, I think it is time for us to jump into the very exciting world of UWC. As it is time for this week's Deep Dive. Are you sick of drinking the same old boring coffee with the same old boring flavors? Well, Marks, it's time for you to check out Bones Coffee Company. Bones Coffee isn't just a drink that wakes you up in the morning. It's a full flavor experience. Small batch roasts that are made to order so that every order is guaranteed to be fresh. Unbelievable, all natural flavors in every single bag. Some of our favorites are Bluesberry, Paradise Pie, and Chocolate Raspberry. 
But if you're not into the flavored coffees, they've got their single origin series featuring coffee beans from the greatest coffee growing regions in the world. Visit GameMarksPod.com slash coffee to place your order and try the world's freshest small batch coffee. Johnny, how good is that Bones coffee? All right, so I have been sipping on the white chocolate peppermint because I'm a big peppermint fan. Delicious. But this morning I put in the gingerbread. Oh, man. I can't wait. I got a friend of mine to order the sampler. I'm ready for the maple bacon one. Oh, my God. Oh, I had a cup of the salted caramel this morning, and it is th- – this coffee is an experience. It is It is just – it's unlike any coffee I've ever had. It just – it smells – or it tastes as good as it smells, and that's such a like a rare occurrence where like – you know, you know what I'm saying? Like you smell something yeah. like, oh, this this smells great. And then you drink it and you're like, oh, it was all just like. And it tastes good black without cream or sugar. And that's when you know it's a good coffee. Yeah, that's that's the best. And even their, the, the coffee beans themselves, like the single origin unflavored series is is great. It really, you know, you never think about the kind of coffee that you like from like what region of the world. Because you're just like, oh, it's like a coffee. Like who knows where. Like, could you tell me where Dunkin' Donuts coffee beans come from? Yeah, the store down the block. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But, like, with Bones, you know exactly where the beans come from. You can pick to buy the beans from a specific region. Like, it's so so interesting and in-depth. And, like, you get all the, the wonder and ease of being a coffee snob without actually being the coffee snob. Right. But, okay, let's get into this deep dive here. Because this is probably one of the more unique games we're ever going to play because it wasn't released. Absolutely. What we mean by that is there's a game collector on YouTube named Stephen Reese, a.k.a. Archon1981 on YouTube. So he discovered this game making a deal with a former Nintendo employee who he doesn't want to name, obviously. And he didn't think it was... Like, you know, anything undiscovered until he popped it in. Because it was actually already carted. Like, it's on a cartridge. It just no label, obviously. It was ready to go to Nintendo to be published. And he popped it in and said, this is, like, this <laughs> this game doesn't exist. Like, what is this? But it has a full, like, NWA, WCW roster, so. I don't even know how to describe how cool this is. Imagine that feeling. Like, wait, like, hang on. <laughs> Did I just discover a relic? Such a such a small amount of people have seen this game because think about it, nineteen eighty nine, you know, video games. You know, it, the video games then are not what they are today. So like eighty three, video game market pretty much all but crashes. So now we're eighty nine, we are back full swing into video games, and now you find years later that during one of the biggest resurgences in video games that there is a unreleased version of a wrestling game. Like I, I, I can't put it into words how cool of a feeling that must have been. And this is crazy enough that WWE.com even ran a story on it in March of 2019. And they said, we could only assume UWC stands for Universal Wrestling Corporation, which was what WCW was founded as when Ted Turner purchased Jim Crockett Promotions and in turn the rights to World Championship Wrestling in 1988. This would make this unreleased game the earliest WCW game on record. And we're going to get more into that later. So, you know, technically speaking, between this and Thunder, we really have played every WCW game now. Yeah, so we'll actually like complete an entire series that's whew, wow it's something something special planned for I, that that yeah, thunder episode and i don't think i'm i don't think i'm ready for it to end <laughs> oh. all right we'll but, always have the memories johnny there will always be super brawl there will always be super brawl georgie <laughs> take me through this game all right so this game is developed 1989 for the nintendo entertainment system developed by thinking rabbit published by Sega. So there's no real knowledge as to why this game went unreleased, but it was possibly shelved in favor of Nichibutsu's WCW World Championship Wrestling, which was also known as Superstar Pro Wrestling in Japan, that came out on December 9th, 1989 in Japan. Check it out in our archives. (laughs) 
Now, WWF WrestleMania... Check it out in the archives. Thank you. Also came out in 1989 for the Nintendo and WWF Superstars for the arcade cabinet. This game is mostly complete. Now, roughly 22% of the ROM contains inaccessible data, according to FCEUX code data logger. And the game also surprisingly features a two-player mode. And it can be, like, it's not a story mode, but it can be completed and it features staff credit. So this game was on its way. It is, yeah. It's mostly a finished game, which is awesome. Now, the thing is, the majority of the staff that worked on this game also worked on the Japanese-exclusive Fighting Road for the Famicom in 88, but they never worked on another wrestling game. So this was it. So something must have happened here that we just don't know about. Yeah, there's there's definitely something there. But in terms of what you've got for game types, uh, there's three modes. There's single match, a tag match, and the Elimination Series. Now, the game also has three different difficulties. Beginner, Professional, and Master. And as you start from the lowest difficulty, the game will slowly ramp up every four rounds, which is kind of cool. It's, it's you know, like an intelligent matchmaking system where even if you start on the lowest difficulty, by the end, it really provides you that challenge. You can't just breeze through every match. Now, Johnny... Do you, uh, do you do you think you want to hop through this roster with me? I will uh, I will happily take the roster this week. I know it's a it's a heavy lift. Oh, okay. You sure you can handle it? Yeah, I think I got it. So All there's right. a whopping a whopping eight characters in this game. So you know, for, forgive me if I mess any of these up. So <sighs> Goose Fraba and get centered and calm down as we read through this. All right. You have Road Warrior Animal, Road Warrior Hawk, Sting, Jimmy Garvin, Beautiful Bobby Eaton. Sweet Stan Lane, The Nature Boy, Ric Flair, and Barry Windham. How'd I do? You did, you did good. Now, I just want to point out that the 1989 WCW Wrestling that came out for... Actually came out in 1990 for the, for the NES had 13 wrestlers, where this one only had 8. So that one had Flair... Sting, Luger, Mike Rotundo, The Road Warriors, Steve Williams, Kevin Sullivan, Ricky Steamboat, Rick Steiner, Eddie Gilbert, and Michael Hayes. Now, we were kind of shafted here with getting Jimmy Garvin, Bobby Eaton, Stan Lane, Barry Windham, but like, I just want to know what happened with this game. Like, Why did this start as like these particular eight wrestlers, and then a year later, a game comes out with a completely different roster? Yeah, I don't know. Which is know. supposedly the same company. So, it, you know what it is? If you Google this game, um, you can find the pictures of the actual cartridge itself. I've never seen an original Nintendo cartridge without a label, and it is the strangest thing to me. It looks naked, right? It looks so weird. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's actually, I mean, I guess we'll say it now, there's no box art for this game, so we can't go through the box art because it just doesn't exist. It never got to that stage, but I think we could imagine you know, what it would look like. Yeah, and, you know, there's there's still a lot to talk about uh, graphically. Um, there are character models. There's a ring. Obviously, the game is fully playable, so there's plenty uh, to talk about there. So I, uh, I say we just jump into that right now. Johnny, what do you say? Let's do it. So, all right. first of all, the ring is completely blue, which is fine. It looks nice with the pink trim, like uh, turnbuckle pads and all that, the logo. The UWC logo... I wish it was the cool one that's on the menu screen, but it's kind of just the words typed out. The thing that bothers me a little bit, the ref shirt is blue and black. What are we in, SmackDown in 2002? Um, all right, so so here's my argument against, or with that. I guess not. I was going to say, are there really any white, like, is white in the color palette for this game? I mean, Ric Flair's hair. Is I was just, white. and then, and then I realized that Ric Flair's hair is, and and Barry Windham's hair are on that that spectrum. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I was trying to get. Him, I was going to make a case, but maybe maybe it's blue so that the ref doesn't stand out so much. That's true. That's all right. That's just me really nitpicking the crowd. It, obviously, I'm going to also pick apart, but it's not that bad. It's just kind of faces making <laughs> weird, like looking faces. Uh, just copied yeah, and pasted same- throughout. It's fine. It's the same, maybe 20 faces, just copy and paste it over, you know. Now, instead of a health bar, you actually start at 200, and with each hit you take, it works down to zero. So, 
what I found playing through is a submission. If you hit zero, it's an automatic give up. But pins could take place no matter when. And there was one point where I was playing through and I was at around 90 and I couldn't kick out of a pin and I lost. So yep. I don't believe you have to fully deplete the health bar in order to win. I don't know. that Maybe that's another reason this game might have had like a few bugs and they were like, eh, maybe we shouldn't put it out and they just never did. Um, it has that fire pro aspect where if you're too close to the ropes and you do a move, you're being sent outside the ring. And sometimes it doesn't work out the way it should. Like if George clotheslined me, he would fly out of the ring and I would be on the apron. So it's a little, some things are a little odd here. Yeah, there's there's a, a couple of things that don't make sense. But I mean, graphically, the sprites are not bad. Um, the not wrestlers look like the wrestlers. The only big gripe I had noticeably was that um, in the match, Hawk's face paint looks more like he is an Egyptian wrestler than he is actually a road warrior. Um, <laughs> but aside from that, everything else looks pretty good. I mean, Ric Flair looks like Ric Flair. Barry Windham looks like Barry Windham. I mean, even to a certain extent, like Hawk looks like Hawk. Like the hair is right. Animal looks like Animal. You know, the sprites look good. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it looks better than WCW Wrestling that came out a year later because for some reason in that game, everybody is wearing tights, including Ric Flair, who was wearing yellow tights. Um, That's this game, true. at least they got this part right. Sting looks like Galoob Sting in his his uh, light blue pants, you know? like it's This game looks, looks like they tried a little more. Yeah. Uh, so... Like Johnny said before, there is not uh there's no box art available for this game. So I guess we'll break down the menu screen here with that that nice logo on the front. So it's a yellow screen. You see uh the UWC logo. It almost looks like it's supposed to be um like a dragon or a serpent like a f- or something. Firebird so, or something. Yeah, so so the the E or the C has eyes and looks like a mouth. The W is shaped like wings, and then the U has a tail next to it. So it almost looks like it's supposed to be some kind of I I don't know really what kind of animal they're going for, but it's it's a cool looking logo. Like Johnny said earlier, I wish they would have used this more in the game. Like if the ring mat had this logo on it, that would have been awesome. Yeah, I, I, listen, beggars can't be choosers. The game didn't even come out, but what we did get, I think, was a pretty cool product. Yeah, it's very interesting and, you know, super awesome that we're able to cover a prototype game on the podcast. Absolutely. And speaking of that, George, did you know? Did you know it would be a full decade before Bobby Eaton would be featured in a video game, which was 1999's WCW Mayhem? Did you know? After this game was discovered, Stephen Reese shipped the cartridge out to the Video Game History Foundation to ensure that it gets properly archived. Did you know the ROM has since been made public and is available for download on HiddenPalace.org? Now, that's pretty cool because if you watch his first video, Steven Reese, right away he's like, I don't want this game. Like, this game shouldn't be held back from the public. I want this to go to the Video Game History Foundation. And he sent it out. And they did properly archive it. And then they did put it out in ROM form, which is awesome. Like, we were, we were able to play it. Yeah, it's great. Um, now... Normally, this is the part where I would go, hey, Johnny, put on that nice, relaxing music, take me through some ratings and reviews, but uh, it's an unreleased game, so there (laughs) are no ratings and reviews. I I will say this, though. If you Google it, just about every aggregator out there now has reviewed the game, so if you want the rating and reviews of people now, uh, just do a quick search, and you'll see what people think of it. But, George... Do you happen to know uh, what time it is? Oh, uh, you know, I'm just going to look at my my Fitbit right here. It's time to rate the games. The game! All right, George Feast. The unreleased UWC. What do you think? Will you play it forever? Woo! 
or future endeavor. You're fired! So I'm trying to separate the cool factor of playing a prototype game from the game itself because obviously, you know, this is a very unique experience. Um, but that being said, the only big complaint I have about the game is I wish the roster was different. Like, I wish there were some different names in the roster, but, like, the game itself is not bad for an 89 wrestling game. Uh, I Are there other games that I would want to play more than this? Yeah, absolutely. But I think for what it is, it's not a bad game, and I actually kind of wished it got released. So I think I'm going to play it forever. Woo! All right. All right, Johnny Clash, UWC, prototype game. Are you going to play it forever or future endeavor? So I'm actually opposite of you. I think that the roster makes this game stand out because we don't have this roster in any other game. Like they, These were the heavy hitters here, and this is what they ran with. So other than that, I thought this game played way better than the other WCW game for the NES, and I thought it played way better than Super Brawl. We hated that game. I'm, <laughs> I'm playing this one forever. Woo! All right. Now, George, we also had a little clash at the Feast game. All right, last week we played Rage in the Cage, and like we said, George won. But to see this week's Clash at the Feast, head on over to youtube.com slash Podcast. We promise it was one for the ages because George stole Sting from me, and we did a little role reversal. All right, so other than that, we want to thank WCW Worldwide on Twitter, who's one of our good pals who actually wrote an article about this game and he did an interview with Stephen Reese. So check that out on WCWWorldwide.com and we're also going to post that link up for you guys to check out. And now Stephen Reese, he actually changed his YouTube name to Art of Nintendo Power. So if you want to go check out this video on UWC and see how he discovered it and found it, you can find him there. And I would like to also get him for an interview on here. I reached out to him. Maybe we can make that happen. Maybe you guys could, uh, you know, bother him a little bit. Yeah, and uh, I have to highly recommend there is a a video of Steven going through his game room. And it is awesome. That is a quick follow for me. (laughs) Absolute dream goal setup he's got. I, yeah, I'll definitely be stealing some of these uh, ideas he has. Now, I just want to say it was, like we said, you could download this ROM and hiddenpalace.org. It made it super easy. As long as you have some sort of emulator for NES, you're able to play it. It's one click and you're in, and then it's just you could play on your keyboard very easily. So I was pretty happy about that, and we both played it forever. So I think we're going to be playing this again. I think we should uh, maybe run this on our little Twitch key soon. Oh, maybe that'll happen. Maybe, maybe. But obviously, guys, listen... Um, for those of you who are crossover listeners of the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast and are a part of the Patreon group, I made a big, lengthy post about emulation in there. But if anyone needs a hand in getting this game to run, please do not hesitate to reach out. You can tweet at us at GameMarksPod, and we'll be happy to give you a hand. And Mac users, I got your back. Don't worry. Absolutely. <laughs> Gaming George, for all here at the Game, Gaming the game for Marks all. Podcast. That should be our next shirt. Gaming for all. Now, George, why don't you tell us what we're playing next week? So we got a recommendation on the Twitch stream. And, uh, you know, they had recommended that we play a game series that we have known and loved on this podcast for many episodes. But we have yet to venture into the world of portable gaming. And that is why. Next week on the Game Marks Podcast, we are playing Fire Pro Wrestling for the Game Boy Advance. Which was our favorite handheld console, if you listen to Question of the Week. I'm ready. Let's oh, go. Oh, yeah. But Georgie, with that, this is a, a little bit of a shorter episode because there's a lot 
we don't even know about this game because nobody knows about this game. I wish we had more answers about the development. Maybe as years go by, uh, more and more will come out about this. I don't know. Yeah. As it gets uncovered, we will be sure to cover it. But uh, why don't you take us home now? All right. Well, that's going to do it for us this week on the Game Marks podcast. Please check out our Pro Wrestling Tees store at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Game Marks pod. Remember... Once we hit 10 shirts, you get that Bret Hart video game retrospective, and we're already closer than we expected to be by now. And remember, it's the best way besides listening to support the podcast, and be sure to follow us on all forms of social media at Game Marks Pod. Leave us a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts, and subscribe to wherever great podcasts can be found. Thank you for hanging out with us this week. Johnny, this was a really, really interesting, cool, different, whatever word you want to use episode for us uh wear your masks wash your hands social distance be safe johnny say goodbye game over Woo! marks game marks podcast put them on the radar playing rare games second saturn no game shark johnny and george work hard and they play hard future endeavor games and put them in the graveyard from the deep to the clash at the feast how can i get more that's question of the week follow on twitch there's nothing that they won't play game marks podcast every single monday